short presentation. Mike van der Zande, I hope the pronunciation is okay, couldn't attend, so Hans Boumeister will replace her. Yeah, it's uh, perhaps a great surprise to see me here again. Um, Maike van der Zande would have presented this, but she could not make it. Um, I will try to tell you something about a study we did, uh, an oral feeding study of, of silver nanoparticles in, in red. As has been mentioned before, silver is uh, quite widely used in all kinds of applications. Uh, and, the, and the question is, if you want to perform risk assessment, of course, how does the, the nat natural barriers uh, that we have in our body uh, prevent uh, or protect us from silver nanoparticles? So to test, it, test this, we ex exposed uh, or fed animals uh, two types of, of silver nanoparticles. Uh, and as a sort of control or to link with conventional uh, uh, chemistry, uh, we used uh, uh, silver nitrate. Um, we tested several endpoints, biodistribution, uh, and, and some to toxic endpoints. But I will show that later on. First of all, the materials we used. As I said, we used uh, two uh, types of uh, nanoparticles. One from the uh, Joint Research Center, uh, which is in, in their uh, nanoparticle repository. Uh, well, you see the characteristics. The particles are smaller than, than on average, smaller than, than 20 nanometers. Um, and importantly, for the, the uh, NM material, we characterize the amount of free ions in the suspensions, because in the end, this will be critical. Uh, what's the, the, the ratio of ions to particles? And in these materials, about 8% uh, of the total silver is present in the ionic form. And, and this is quite stable over time, so we are quite sure that we expose the animals to uh, the, the, the particles and 8% silver in these suspensions. The study design, um, since uh, roughly 10% uh, of the total silver is present at, in ionic form, we had a 10 times lower concentration uh, of, of the uh, silver nitrate compared to the silver nanoparticles. We exposed the animals via gavage for 28 days, uh, had two uh, washout periods, one of a week and one of two months, uh, and assessed at all these time points the, the uh, distribution of, of silver in, in different organs. Uh, we looked at uh, acute toxicity at, at several points, and started, and I will show uh, some initial results, uh, with a very sensitive tool, uh, the, the transcriptome uh, in, in the liver. So, some results. Um, first of all, the, the kinetics. In the, in the top graph, you see um, um, the uh, amount of, 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 of silver uh, absorbed uh, into the blood. Um, and in the graph, it's expressed uh, or normalized on the total uh, silver uh, that was given to the animals. And what you clearly see there is that uh, the, the uh, ionic um, administrations of the silver ions are very much more readily uh, bioavailable than the two particles. It's about 10% more bioavailable. Um, but if you, on the other hand, express uh, the, 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 uh, the amounts of, of, of silver in blood uh, on, on the soluble silver basis, and then you see that, well, 8% of, of, in the suspensions, 8% is, is present in the ionic form, but it's not completely the same uh, as, as in the ionic group. So this suggests that in the, in the nanoparticle group, some of the particles will be absorbed uh, into the blood or will be translocated uh, over the gut wall to the blood. With um, an elementary analysis, we determine total silver uh, in, in various tissues, and you see the biodistribution here. Um, again, a difference between the ions and the particles. Um, silver uh, enters mainly up in, in liver spleen, but also very yeah, predominantly in, in the testis and in, in the kidney. Um, and again, you see the two ways of, of, of representing the data as, as a, a total silver and normalized on, on, the, on the soluble silver. And, and what's yes, striking, perhaps, is, is that there's no big difference in, in the way you administer silver. The nanoparticles do not distribute to other tissues than uh, the uh, silver nitrate or the silver ions. A big question, of course, is how do, does the silver look like in, in either 
die, die, die uh, uh, stomach and, and gut content, or in, in tissues. For this, we used a single particle ICPMS. Um, and we run here into the clear lim technical limitations of the single particle ICPMS because one of the restraints is the, the limit of size, the size limit of detection. Um, and um, particles smaller than, than, than 20, 30 nanometers are very difficult to detect with this technique. But having said that, uh, I think these results clearly show that in all groups, we find particles back in the stomach and gut content, but also in, in liver, spleen, and lungs of these uh, rats that were exposed, we do find nanoparticles. So not only in, in animals exposed to, to the two nanoparticles, but also in, in the animals exposed to silver ions. And then the big question is, of course, where are these particles formed? But we find them both in the, in the gut content and in vivo. As I said, when I uh, explained the, the, the study design, um, we had two uh, washout groups. And then all the, the Jorgens I do not mention here, the, 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 uh, the silver was quite readily gone in, in these uh, time periods, but not in these tissues here. In brain tests, kidney and spleen, uh, quite substantial amounts of, of total silver was retained. And even after two months, um, in the brain and the testes, yeah, only a yeah, limited amount of silver was gone, so silver is really retained in the brain and in the testes. Then, of course, comes the question, yeah, what, are, what, are, what are, are there potential effects? Um, we had a whole range of acute and, and immunotoxicity endpoints which we uh, assessed. And I think the conclusion, you can see the graphs, the conclusion is that there's no strong predominant effects after exposure to the silver or silver nanoparticles for 28 days. And uh, also important to remark, again, no difference between these various exposure groups. As a follow-up of this, uh, we thought, well, um, if, if you have no acute effects, let's use a very, uh, in my view, sensitive techniques and, and look at the transcriptome or differential gene expression in the liver. And again, there, uh, the conclusion is that we, we do see some effects, but not really very, very strong effects that you clearly see uh, yeah, one or the other pathway is affected. Partially, it might, might be due to quite high variation uh, in the um, in high individual variation in, in, in the gene expression uh, of the animals. But, but there are, and we are looking into that currently, potentially some silver effects. Uh, for example, if you compare um, the controls, so the, the, the vehicle controls with the silver groups, and there also is uh, an indication of a time effect if you compare uh, livers obtained from uh, rats uh, after uh, the two months waiting time, so nine, at nine, day 90, compared to the um, um, expression of the messenger RNA at day 29. Um, but this clearly leads, needs further uh, analysis. This brings me to the, to the conclusions, and, and, and mainly I, I think I've addressed them. Uh, already, uh, the primary target organs of, of silver uh, fire feed is, is the liver and the spleen. There's no difference in the, in the distribution. Uh, it's not, not depending on, on the, the formulation of, of silver. Um, this leads to the suggestion or the conclusion that yeah, from, even from nanoparticles, um, yeah, it's uh, the silver ions that are predominantly bioavailable. Um, let's see where I, where I am. I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> um, silver. Uh, oh yeah, and, and there are some particles being formed uh, in, in the uh, ionic uh, exposure groups, and this is, all, I think, uh, yeah, a quite an important finding. Um, in the brain, in the test, the silver is, is retained even after two months washout period. Um, we do not see any acute effects. And we are now looking further into uh, yeah, differential gene expression in the, in the, in the, uh, in the liver. That's where I would like to leave it.
very much. Thank you very much, Hans. Some some question for. So I have a question. What is what I found interesting that the only organs which retain the particles are the, the two organs where you have a tight barrier, the testis and the brain. Do you think it's linked? To, do, do, do you think that that uh, uh, silver is transported as iron? And resynthesize into the, this organ, or the, it's transported as silver nanoparticles to the brain or the testis. Yeah, this is, I think, the very interesting question. Um, um, we don't have really convincing uh, uh, evidence to answer this, but the results from the single particle uh, ICBMS uh, suggest that, um, it, yeah, at both locations, so either in, in the gut uh, or stomach content, we find particles, uh, but also in, in, in liver and, and blood, we, we do find them. So the, the, the question is, has this, uh, these particles been translocated as a particle, or is it a formation of, of, of particulate matter um, in the tissues, we don't know. Other question? I must have, uh, yeah. One question there. <laughs> um, I'm interested in uh, your opinion about the speciation uh, of uh, silver ions in, in vivo, in the, in the animal. Uh, you made clear that it's... Uh, you don't see, of course, free silver in circulation or in tissues. But what, are, what is it then? There's a paper from a Danish group. Uh, they also exposed uh, silver nanoparticles uh, via orally to, to, to rats. They uh, examined the um, um, gut epithelium by EM, did EDX on that, and they found the co-localization of silver. And, uh, and selenium, I think. Um, yesterday, of course, my colleague showed uh, results from in vitro experiments, and there we found in, in the ions a co-localization of, of sulfur and chloride. Um, so if I would speculate, uh, well, there's data, literature data in animals uh, uh, pointing to uh, selenium, uh, but likely chlorine and other elements uh, uh, may form complexes. And of course, yeah, the, the silver ions m might be bound to proteins or whatever. But then I th think um, the, we would not have measured them with single particle ICPMS. This would not have resulted in a mass high enough to be calculated back uh, at particles around 30 nanometers. So I do really think that, that some complexes have been formed um, of, of silver and another element. We did not look into that in detail. It didn't go grey. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, neither blue. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. Thank you.